there's learning how to pull a skiff, and yeah. then there's learning how to pull a skiff. Oh yeah, there's a natural endorphin. Yeah, that one will experience the first time they catch a redfish on a fly. It's over. With our company, with Bay Flats, to be more responsible in the way we grow our business, yeah. and you've heard me say that multiple times, and it starts with conservation, getting rid of all single source plastic. It starts with educating the guides. One thing we're really, really talking about a lot now in the last two years is catch and release. As I get older, you know, I'm 60 years old, and I just want to leave it better than I found it. I 100% believe that that the base root of of conserving any place is offering a good experience in that place. One piece of great advice I could give someone, again, I'm a newbie, but is work on your roll cast and work on short, very short Short shots. Short game. Adapting to your environment Mm -hmm. is such a key element in learning how to be a better fly fisherman. Yeah. You know, it's about paying it forward to the next group coming along and so it, it all ties into doing the right thing yeah conservation um giving back and just really taking care of what has been handed down to us yeah All right, guys, welcome to another edition of the Skiff Wanderer podcast. Today, I am joined by Chris Martin, the president, CEO of Bay Flats Lodge. I've actually been spending the last couple of days down here at Bay Flats. We, uh, we've we been doing a little bit of fly fishing, a little bit of filming. If you guys get a chance, you should check out the rough log. I get into how our fishing went, the food, the, the lodging. This place is absolutely amazing. And honestly, like, so right now we're into actually real quick just so you guys are aware we're sitting outside we're overlooking san antonio bay and you might hear a little bit of cars and people and cars so just so you're aware that's what's going on if you hear that in the background but yeah we came i came in it's springtime down here on the texas coast which typically is a tough time for redfish especially on fly it is and it has been doing nothing but raining and windy and nasty. I've been stuck in the house for two months. <laughs> and so, you know, I, you guys reached out for me to come down and do some, do some film and some podcast stuff with you. And I was like, yeah, I'll come down in, in May and then, you know, we can get everything set up. So, so everybody will be ready for the fall. And I immediately thought to myself, like, wait, <laughs> I might have just made a, I might have just made a huge mistake. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you said that on the boat today <laughs> that I want to come during the week. Yeah. But weekends aren't bad either. No, we there's nothing wrong with going on the weekend, especially where you guys are at. Yeah. And um so it actually beginning of this week it was raining a good bit. And I know the first day we got out there, you all you guys th- we had so we had with us we had um Dane and Mike were our guides for the last couple of days. And you guys, I'm going to be honest, you guys all looked a little nervous about the conditions getting on the water. I know I was nervous about it. Yeah, but those guys are so relaxed. They are. They they are a different breed of, of fishing guides. Yeah. I mean, you know, when I introduced you to those guys, first thing I said is like, let's just go have fun. Yeah. Let's have fun. Let's just go. Let's just go fish. Yeah, and that's that's what fly fishing is so cool about. Is like every day is going to be different. But when I said that, I could see the weight. Yeah, fall off your shoulders, Mike's and Dane's shoulder. And by the way, Mike has a nickname. We call him Eight Ball. No, that's that's no. Gunslinger. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. Maybe I had too many vodkas. <laughs> oh, no. No, I only had one. But, um, yeah, Gunslinger is Mike. Yeah. And Dane is 8-Ball. Or Lunchbox. Well, <laughs> he takes offense to that. I noticed. Because he does eat a lot. 
but I got to be careful. I don't want to upset the apple cart. <laughs> no, so we got on the water. Um, I don't. I don't even think we were on the water two minutes. No, and yeah. those guys had a fish in the boat. Yeah, and what I love about those two guys is that they're so fishy. Yeah, and, they are, and they're laid back. Mm-hmm. Did you get that? Oh yeah. No, you know, like they're the they're the kind of guides that you want to go with because nothing's too much nothing's over the top like every situation is under control and hey you know ah, don't worry about that one find another one you know they're both both guys are from Gunness in Colorado yep we bring them in and one thing they said is like what's this what's all this deal about like fly fishing politics <laughs> and so I go what are you talking about he goes well you know what I'm talking about and so they're just laid back. They just want to fish and have fun. Yeah. And they enjoy working a long day. Oh, yeah. Which I, I respect because I guided for years. And we made them do it. Oh, yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Today I looked over and they were, I think, I think Dean was, Dan, how Dane. you got me saying Dean? <laughs> I think Dane was taking a nap in the bottom of the skiff while they were just floating behind us. Yeah. Yeah. But they ended up yesterday. This is nuts. You got to listen to this. They ended up catching 16 fish between the two of them. And we each we, well, caught, yeah, we each caught yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're the film boat. <laughs> we're the, exactly. But yeah, you know, they tie their own flies. Yep. And it, it's just so uh, cool to, to, to have you down. And I appreciate you coming down and, and getting a chance to know our business. Yeah. And the fact that we love to fly fish. Yeah. It's very new to me. Uh, I've been one year into it. It's, you know. So, sorry about that noise. That's you. That, that noise is, is you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, that was definitely something that, that I noticed. Right, like, you know, you said you've been doing it for one year, but you've got the, like, what I saw was the love and the passion of somebody that's been doing it their whole life. Thank you. And, you know, this is the same thing for, I mean, obviously, I know Mike and Dane have been doing it their whole life, yeah. but they're the same way. They're just passionate about being on the water and having a good day. Yeah. And you can, and when, when you're with a group of guys that you've never met before, but have that same kind of passion, oh, it makes the day so easy. Well, I, you want to share what you love with people. Right. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to practice retirement. <laughs> and, so, and travel more and fly fish different countries. I did forget to say that you were semi-retired. Well, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, my wife would respect you more for that because <laughs> she wants to travel and we love to go on places. And, and one thing I've learned is that you think you're really great until you, until you go to Argentina, Alaska, and you learn and bring, absorb it. I'm like a big sponge, and I want to come back yep. and share what I've learned and share it with our staff. And, you know, we have an opportunity here to share some of the best fly fishing. I mean, I've been to Argentina and Alaska. Yeah. It's a different fishery. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what you experienced yesterday and today is epic oh my goodness yes that like to have a like if you were gonna tell me hey we're gonna have a 16 fish day i'm thinking you're talking october <laughs> no yeah. maybe november maybe september like that's when that's when i expect to have those kind of days right to have one in may in the like in between two fronts yeah with a ton of fresh water in the in the bay system and that's, I mean, and that's, and I know we're going to get into it a little bit more, but, you know, and that's, that's where the whole conservation we need to protect, because that's the days we want to be able to have every single time. Well, you know, you've learned a lot in two days. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I don't think the general public understands what sweat equity and not just that, but like what, how committed we are to sustainability. Right. So before we get into that, the first question I'm gonna ask, that I want to ask you is, um, you j you've only been fly fishing for about a year. One year, right. exactly. 
Um, when did you start fishing? You know, that's a great question. Um, my parents had a game we played when I was wee high mm -hmm. called the Triple Crown. And there was a bait camp on Bolivar Island. Um, we live in Texas City. Yep. And Shirley's Bait Camp. And we'd go out, and it was the first, the most, and the biggest. And I, would, I don't know if I was six or seven or even younger. And whoever won the Triple Crown, everyone else had to buy lunch. <laughs> so how's a seven year old afford lunch? <laughs> they don't. <laughs> so but we did this for years as a family. Yeah. And that just made me the person I am. Yeah. My both my parents are past, but I owe them so much because they taught me about, you know, you take what you only take what you're gonna eat. We mm -hmm. we'd only eat the fish that we caught that night. We never froze anything. Right. And we respected, you know, the limits and we just didn't catch fish and give them away but yeah pete that's that's that young age and they molded me like right. clay and that's why i am who i am today is because my parents got me into fishing yeah when did you start guiding like did you start guiding or did you start the lodge first no i started guiding in 1998 okay and uh i was a commercial salesman i had three careers with one largest tire tar company i won't mention their name but well go i'll go ahead bridgestone yeah so i sold commercial earth moving tires and um i would bring customers down to sea drift we bought a trailer a double wide trailer and deb on fridays would get the fires going the pit get the smoker going and i'd bring clients down and one thing i learned really quick people buy from people yeah and i was a pretty crappy golfer so, and you know, in entertainment, commercial entertainment, you have golfing, fishing, the Astros, sky boxes. You have, you know, you can go different, different avenues. What I felt like is like I could take and bring in caterpillar equipment, mm -hmm. bring them in, house them, take them on a cast and blast or a fishing trip, and no matter what happened in the future with sales. They would always communicate with me. And communication is a key to anything. Right. You know, there's structure, there's communication, and they would they would inform me if a competitor was coming in, like, hey Chris. Yeah, because you've established that you you've gone trust. past you've gone past where, it, where your client a client relationship you to have, a you friendship. You have to establish trust. Yeah. They have to trust you. And that's how all this started is we entertained our guests my customers and I didn't charge them. I mean, it's just a, uh, you know, building. Um, you're just trying to show them a good time and show that yeah, you're, yeah, you're like, a good person. I appreciate your business. Right. It's appreciation. Yeah. And um, one thing led to the other and they asked me like, hey, you need to think about doing this professionally. Yeah. You're really good at it. Your wife's an incredible cook. <laughs> you're a pretty good cook too and you can clean fish. I mean, everything was like, uh, the, the stars were aligned. Right. And so I worked a lot of years, um, 20 plus years for one company. Mm -hmm. I had three different, I had engineering, commercial, and retail with them. They taught me a lot about computers. I was learning Excel and Word before it ever came out. Yeah. And um, very thankful for thankful to them for that for teaching me all that and it's helped me in my business so it's almost a natural it was almost a natural progression for you well yeah my parents taught me how to fish and i always say if you do what you love it's never worked right and i, I say i'm trying to retire but i still love what i do <laughs> <laughs> you know you heard me on the phone today talking yeah. business to different customers and clients and stuff and um but you know one day I got to pass the reins. Yeah. And when that happens, I'll just fly fish more. It's <laughs> so, <laughs> Even perfect. though I, I'm fishing three days a week already. That's I mean, that is in my retirement. It is. You know, it you is. can pick your days. But you know what? Fly fishing um, is it's almost like the sports, the other bad habits I have. Right. 
So I'm an extreme snow skier. Yeah. And which you didn't start until 2013. Yeah. <laughs> which is a which is a little bit of no offense, is a little later in life to start extreme <laughs> snow skiing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So uh and then I I'm a uh I'm just a below a master scuba diver. Right. I'm trying to obtain that title. And so uh, Deb and I are leaving next month for the Red Sea in Egypt to live on a liveaboard for seven days. And again, to get to see how other lodges and service industries work. Right. And you got to, you've got to travel. Travel is education. And so, you know, I've got a lot of bad habits. Uh, snow skiing, scuba diving, and fly fishing are my three, <laughs> my three problems. <laughs> I think the only thing more expensive you could be doing is sailing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. When you're uh, when you're in the Red Sea, you gonna go fly fish at all? You know, gunslinger Mike, mm-hmm. aka Mike. Yeah. Uh, or I got that backwards, but he said he's a very educated person. Yeah. He knows all about it. He says you need to take a fly rod. They have the most insane fish on the shorelines there yeah so i've got to talk to uh the company that's that's putting this on and see if i can do that yeah yeah for yeah, sure the red sea like i think it's i think oman is on my list <laughs> okay. of places i want to go fly fish there you go i think you mean that trigger fish gts yes. yeah, yeah absolutely like what drew you to fly fishing i wanted to be more sustainable with our business Mm -hmm. and fly fishing is a sport that you're sight casting Mm -hmm. you know we don't just blind casting you know i fished for years weight fishing for artificial for i told you about that yeah and i guided for years and the first time i had an opportunity to bring in Winston rods to come down and film I watched it and so when they came down you weren't fly fishing at no, that time no no sir <laughs> so I met a guy named Cole that worked for Winston and he gave me a lesson in the yard yeah and a really good one a back cast forward cast why you you know double haul and so I like challenges. It's just like it's just like snow skiing or, or getting your credentials to be able to be a certified scuba diver. You know, as you get older, it's about quality versus quantity. As we grow up and over the years, it's about more and more and more, me, me. It's not, I just want to experience and go out and be able to share and have fun. It's right. just about having fun. I mean, yeah. and doing new things. And and fly fishing intrigues me because I I my wife if she was sitting here right now, she'll tell you that he's got to master everything he does. No matter if it's you're in a long this is a long road. Yeah. Well, snowboarding and skiing is a long road. Yes. It is. And so um I got I have I've had great days and I've had days that you know aren't so great. Yeah. But it it brings you back and it reels you in to understand that it's a team sport. Yeah. It's a team sport and I was very very um fortunate growing up to become a pretty dang good tennis player believe it or not um my doubles partner and i in, in, as a sophomore we won state my brother and i we played US, US, usta tennis all over the united states and it's a team sport you know i played a lot of doubles yeah and i feel like there's a correlation between doubles tennis playing and fly fishing i could see that and you know when you're setting up a serve and volley which doesn't happen as much now I mean, it seems like everybody's playing pickleball. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what I haven't, I haven't done it, but I want to do it. Yeah. And that, and my wife's like, 
you do not need another hobby <laughs> no but like it, it really so one of the things that i that that i that i say is that there's learning how to pull a skiff and then yeah. there's learning how to pull a skiff oh yeah because being able to pull a skiff down a shoreline is one thing but being able to put someone on a fish yeah set them up for a shot put them on a fish is a whole another hey tight whole other thing i put you on a couple of fish you did i messed up a few of them well we both did well well we're not we're the we're film but we're the film yeah we're not, we're, not, <laughs> so, we're not eight ball and gunslinger no but but it is it's it i is. mean it, it's you know there's there there are guys that i fish with that i've been fishing with i won't say long like since i started right and i know they know i know what they need and they don't have to say a word, and I start moving the boat, and they know that when we see a fish, what I'm going to do with the boat, without me saying a word, and you just you if as you get into fly fishing, you start getting these guys that you go with regularly, and you start building that teamwork of like he, you know, I don't know if I hope I did it, but like on the boat when we were on the boat, like I don't know if you caught on, like I would say, hey, I'm turning the boat right, oh, so yeah. you're gonna have a forehand shot, absolutely, or, and like to me, like when i'm fishing with somebody that i haven't fished with a lot or or i'm new fishing with like i like to give them a lot of communication so that they know okay the boat's turning this way this is where the shot's going to be but you'll start building those relationships with guys where you don't have to say that right and that to me is like that's i see mike and dane doing that yep yep you and, see that all and yeah, then with those guys they can you know their their only communication is tick 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 tick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah, because because even I mean, yeah, you'll see where you can tell. Like I can tell watching you strip. Like okay, he doesn't know where the fly is right now, or he's not sure where the fish is, but he's in the right zone. So I'm gonna tell him what he needs to do. Right. Um, and what's really like I've only done it a couple of times where I've talked talked friends on. The, I don't know if you've had it yet where you've talked somebody onto a fish. Oh yeah. But when you're on the polling platform and you go, hey, there's a fish, forty feet, nine o'clock. And they're just looking, they're looking like, hey, just I need you to just put a cast out there. And they put that cast out, and you're like, all right, long strip, long strip, 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 strip. All right, nice. I need a nice, long, smooth strip right here. And then that fish turns, and they're like, dude, I never saw it. And you're like, yeah, I just caught that fish, See, it's and team, I'm on the polling platform. It goes back to, to the teamwork. Exactly. And I can't really describe it, but there's a natural endorphin. Yeah that one will experience the first time they catch a redfish on a fly it's over i have <laughs> how's 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 your bay boat doing <laughs> we won't talk about that it hasn't been started in a year <laughs> so my wife won't let me sell it because of grandkids <laughs> but and i have i don't know how many waterloo rods back in the corner of my house 15 of them they haven't they've got they probably have cobwebs on them so we're making you know we're making uh we're making a change and we want to do what's right you know we're talking about teamwork while fly fishing and one of the things that i've noticed the last two days being here is the teamwork and the team that you've built at this lodge and i want to talk about the about the lodge yeah because absolutely it to, to me so Actually, I don't know that I've told you this yet. This is the first time I have ever been at a lodge. Really? I've never stayed at a lodge before. How's the food? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> the, f the food is... That double bone pork chop that's French cut with balsamic glaze and polenta. That's amazing. And spinach. Yeah. Yeah. You, you never said a word during dinner. I, I was too busy. <laughs> yeah, I know. You and should, then, you, yeah, that, and then, yeah, last. Miss Judy, fisherman, fly fisherman special in the morning. Oh, I didn't need to eat lunch. You're like, yo, dude, you ready for lunch? I'm like, no. <laughs> Are the fish, ta the, the fish, like, the breakfast tacos? Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually I'm a bit of a connoisseur of tacos. <laughs> yeah. Those are, those are spot on. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, Dane and Mike. When I told when I told him yesterday, like, hey, I'm bringing tacos out because we need to go. Yeah. And today, you notice they showed up a lot earlier. Yeah. 
And when I said, hey, I got your tacos for you. Miss Judy loves you. And she's like, we love her. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I don't think we even ate lunch today. We didn't. We're so full. We're so full. <laughs> We're like ticks. You know, um, Hunter, one of your managers and your grandson. Yep. The first day that I was that I came in, I signed in, and he he's telling me a little bit about the food. He's like, "You're gonna leave here, and, and you're not gonna eat, need to eat again for for the rest of the week." <laughs> and he's not lying. The food is phenomenal. Yeah. Last night, um, appetizers. We had shrimp tacos, frog legs. We're trying to. We Hunter and I were trying to get Miss Little to give us all her secrets about how she fries everything. Oh no, she wouldn't do it. Nope. And then a twenty ounce ribeye with asparagus and mashed potatoes. I I don't know how I got home last night. Well, no. I, to you, the you to the a, guest house. You had a golf cart. Yeah, but I was so full, <laughs> so full. Yeah. No, but that's that's in. But one, like I said, one of the things that I've noticed is like the staff here just operates as a team and you know what like fly fishing with you and seeing you how how you interact with the guides and how you interact with the staff like i mean i'm a firm believer that it comes from the top down and and you've built a team here and well, it feels it, it almost that. feels more like a fan which i mean it feels like a family it is and it's um it's just been really cool like you walk in and everybody's saying hi and greeting you and asking you how the day went and you know talking about what's for dinner and trying to give up secrets and it's it's yeah. been a really cool experience awesome well, i'm glad yeah. to hear that you know and my dad left me with great advice many great wisdoms but one thing he said is that you have about one and a half seconds to make an impression. Yeah. And you don't get second chances. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. And he was he was my mentor. I mean, he taught me how to fish. He taught me how to run a business. Yeah. And he had, I don't even know if he graduated from high school, but he worked, he worked hard. Yeah. 15-hour days, and that's what he instilled in us. And Deb and I, Deb and I both worked really hard to... Um, set up almost like a legacy for our our stepson, our my, her son, yeah, TJ, and the staff. And um, we want our guides to be able, to, you know, when we're when we're gone, we want to be able to keep this going. Yeah, I don't want to sell it. I've had I've had people ask me about selling, and I'm like, no, I'm not interested. Right, and. And we want to take care of the bay too at the same time, and be responsible and do it in a responsible way. And that was and that and and that was like the next thing that um, you know I was talking to um, some of your marketing team, and they were they kind of keyed me in on a few things that they would that they they that they wanted me to notice while I was here, and they had mentioned um, the measure the sustainability measures that you guys are taking and i was like man what and i'm thinking to myself as i'm driving down and i'm looking at this and i'm like what what does a lodge have like like it didn't make sense to me you know does like, it now it i and and, I, and unfortunately like i haven't been to this is the first lodge that i've yeah. been to so i don't have a lot of like experience to say like man you know this to compare it to but from a sustainable like from a company that you see in the forefront that wants to be sustainable i mean to me it's like you guys are doing stuff that you know like companies like yeti are trying to do you know you guys right. are trying to cut plastic you're trying to provide better water you're trying to um limit the the amount of fish that make it back that don't make it back into the bay at the end of the day right and um, I, honestly, I want you to I want you to talk about it a little well, bit because I I know it's something that's near and dear to your heart. Yeah, the it, uh, it all really started pre-COVID. Uh, the fish kill we had during the freeze, um, Hurricane Harvey. I mean, all those Mother Nature things are going to throw a wrench into your program, right? Right. And so you have to have a contingency plan. And 
we we decided to work with you know work with our marketing team and say hey look we've got to come up with a better program i, I want to i want this company to be sustainable and i want to do it in a responsible way and the way i want to do it is i want it to be real authentic and relatable and the story i want to tell is that we are going to go 150 percent in yeah and we did and our first year we bought 10,000 yeti cups to give to every guest yep so it's complimentary yep and so every guest that walks in will use that cup throughout their entire stay and so there's that was a, that was phase one. We had three phases. Yeah. Actually, we're in like five phases. <laughs> so, Guys, we have three phases, but it's going to turn into ten. It's it's it just keeps growing. Right. And it, you know what? I like challenges, and I, I want to be challenged. I want to be pushed, and it keeps me motivated to want to do m more and do better and do it for the bay, but also do it for our future kids coming up. Yeah. You know, again, right. my oh, parents yeah. got me to, to into fishing, and so what we did, um, we said, okay, we got we got all these yetis, but we have this, you know, we have city water. Yeah. And so we got it. We got to eliminate single source plastic. We got to get rid of the water bottles. You right. think about it; it takes four hundred to five hundred years to decompose one single source water bottle. People don't realize that in a landfill. They have no idea. So, you know, what we decided was, okay, let's get Ecolab. Let's get uh, Culligan. Mm -hmm. Let's call them to be partners. And they they embraced the whole program. So did Yeti. That's, which is awesome. Yeah, and so Culligan came in and put reverse osmosis on all the properties. And it's not cheap. I'm not going to go into the numbers, but yeah. I'm going to just tell you, you could buy a couple of vehicles maybe three nice suburbans for what we invested so we have really nice water to drink yeah so you guys have the reverse osmosis machine and then you talk what did you guys like what's the like we i know about the cups what else are you guys doing like so we had to figure a way to you know our staff makes incredible lunches right yes. so part of being sustainable is getting rid of plastic styrofoam and Yeti actually worked with us, and we uh, worked with them to get Yeti lunch boxes, right. lunch bags. And so it's really cool because we have a stainless steel D-ring with every guy's name on it. Mm -hmm. And so we deliver those to the boats each day. And then when uh, the guide comes in, he empties what water was not used, and we retrieve those, bring them all back. And there's a process where... Everything with Ecolab, I showed you that, the dishwasher, it does dishes in like 45 seconds yeah. to a minute. And it's got the chemicals. Um, so, you know, we're sanitizing every day. And, you know, everybody has hiccups about, well, you know, how do I know someone didn't drink out of that? You know, I, I got that pushback from some of the staff. Like, how do I know, you know, we, we're guests are asking us like are these clean well yeah. the fork you use right the fork it's, the plate the the water <laughs> the bottles, wine glass it it gets sanitized every day the water bottles are going through the same process that exactly. all the dishes we go break through. everything down yeah and you know i want to thank yeti for sure man i mean if it wasn't for them uh i don't think we could do this program and and uh they've been very kind to us um we have a great relationship, working relationship with them. Yeah. But that's not just – that's just part of our conservation sustainability program. One thing we're really, really talking about a lot now in the last two years is catch and release. Yeah. Um, you haven't seen nothing yet. So we've done some tournaments using an app. It's a work in progress where these companies come down. You know, it's a corporate event. You might have 32 people. And – some of them have fish, some of them haven't. Some of them, someone want to take some fish home. Right. Well, the way the tournament is geared on this app is that everything has to be released. But we also allow you to, if 
you want to take a couple of fish home or have that fish for dinner tonight at our lodge, we can cook it five different ways. Yeah. You know, grill it, black it, you know, fry it, whatever you want. We'll, we'll accommodate you. But the cool part is, is we have learned to, to turn a big ship in a small bay. That's what this catch and release is. Because we, we have caught fish for a long time, 25 yeah. years here, and we're repurposing and re-educating a lot of our clients that, hey, if this bay system is to be sustainable and we are able to <laughs> give back yeah. and have a better bay system going forward, We've got to make a change. We've got to do what's right. Right. And that's the that's the thing that, you know, I can sit here and have a lot of people say, hey, oh, they're hypocritical. You know, they're catching and releasing, but they're, they're also taking a lot of fish. If we were hypocritical, why would we be doing all these programs? Right. And, and I think, too, like, it's, it's easy to... I mean, it's easy to stand on the outside and look in and say, you know, you know, say what, like what you're saying without realizing, like, it takes, it's, it's not something that can happen overnight. No. Like you can't so, just wake up tomorrow and be like, all right, guys, no more. We're not keeping any fish anymore. Right. It takes, you know, I mean, some of these clients you might not see, but once a year. Right. And so, you know, the first time you see them, they might be a little hesitant and you want to work with them and then they might go home after that first year and think about it and then you know year two they come back and they don't want to keep any right and that's i mean it's 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 something i see like again and again it just anywhere is that you know that's a good truck yeah that's a loud truck that's my grandson leaving for the day <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but I, I and i think that's what 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 I, what I'm hoping like some people will realize is like you guys are taking the right steps and yeah. it just it doesn't happen overnight. No, I mean it's like our fly fishing program. We started it four almost four years ago and you know, I was saying bye to Dane and Mike today as they were leaving and both of them said, Hey, we'll see you next week. We had three days in a row. Yeah. It's a two boat trip, out of state gig. I mean you know they're looking at, they're staring down three to four days a week fly fishing for us. And that just shows you right there that we are taking the right measures. Yeah. And, you know, conservation comes in many different, comes in different many uh, forms. Like people don't realize back in the days when I was guiding, you know, I work with, CCA, Texas Parks and Wildlife, we would go catch the broodstock and they would bring a tank in behind a truck and we would put the broodstock in that tank. They would take it to the Sea Center of Texas. And so many months later, we'd release a million fingerlings. Right. And we still donate money to them. Um, so I said this to you earlier and, you know, you want to do us right. Yeah. Um, we're taking a lot of measures going forward. Uh, my focal point for the next year with our marketing team, our staff, our guys is catch and release. Yeah. Educate, re-educate the customer. We, <laughs> you can't. I'm gonna. You're gonna love this. You can't expect what you don't inspect. Right. You get that? Yeah. So you have to invest and be. You have to lead by example. And so. Um, our guides, they're doing a great job asking questions like, hey, do you guys, is this a catch and release trip today? That's the first thing we want to ask. And one thing on our website in our online booking process is that we, we want to really market. We offer catch and release trips. You right. would be so surprised on how many people book online that we make everybody, when you book online, you have to check it. You cannot prompt pass it. You are you going to catch and release? Or are you going to catch, keep your fish and make them think about it? No, you cannot go past it. Right, right. That's and, what I'm saying. It's because you can't go past it, yeah, you have to think about it for yeah, a second. Yeah, it's, it's a built-in measure yeah. that we benchmarked, and what happened, what we're finding out is about 50 percent of people want to catch and release. It's yeah. a cool feeling because, you know, 
back in the days, TJ said this the other day, he goes, you know, when you got it back in the early 2000s, 2001, 2002, I would discount for catch and release trips. I gave 50 to, I think it was $75 a day off if you would release everything. Really? I did that, that 20, 20 years ago. I know. <laughs> so it's always been on my forefront, but as I get older, you know, I'm 60 years old, and I just want to leave it better than I found it. Yeah. That's that's the main goal. Yeah. No, I mean, that's something. Like, that, like, a lot of, of for me, a lot of, like, everything that I'm doing with Skiff Wander is i is is kind of the same mindset i want i i want to leave it better than i found it i i i want to look at my grandkids one day and saying and tell them like you guys don't know how good you have it because it wasn't like this when when you guys weren't when we were kids so pete we're on the way in today and i talked about growing up and meeting my wife in old town katie texas goose and duck capital of the world yeah if you go back today and ask any of the rice farmers, well, there's none left. It's, it's extinct. The development came out in Katy, and that's what I'm scared about here. The, the housing, the houses, the developers, these, that you cannot, and this is kind of getting off track here, but you cannot build a million dollar house in the marsh and expect a hurricane not to hit it right and it you've got more boats i mean when the oil field was blowing and going every 25 year old oh my goodness oh wow every 25 year old kid was driving a hundred thousand dollar boat behind his truck heck yeah and they had duck duck lanyards (laughs) hanging from their neck and so what happened is it's pressure yeah. We cannot withstand the pressure in this bay, in every bay down the Texas coast. Um, oh, I watch. I mean, I I watch it. I'm I'm I watch it daily, in where I oh, live. Oh, it's in way Corpus. worse down there. Yeah, yeah. I How mean, many boats did you see the first day? Here? Yeah. Well, there was that one, that one Hell's Bay that was following us around all day. That was it. <laughs> that, yeah. That's our boat. That was our boat. So we never saw a boat. Right. And it's a weekday, but you can't say that if you're south or north of us. No, no, and and that's something. I mean, I've I've lived in Corpus since 2019, and the first year that I had the skiff, I could I could I could leave the boat ramp, and I wouldn't have to go really far, right? And I wouldn't see another boat. And after COVID last year. You could be in the middle of February, middle of the week, and you'd run into three, three or four different boats. Wow. And one of my favorite cuts that I'm not going to name because everybody will go find it is in the process of, is in the process of having, I don't know how many condos built on it. Wow. And you drive by and you look at it and, you know, you, 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 you look at it and you go, are they setting that up to collect all the runoff from the yard, from the driveway, from the house? Or is that all just going to go into this cut that is a sanctuary for redfish, trout, flounder in the winter? So, knowledge is power. Mm-hmm. And education is so critical right now on repurposing our goals for how we can educate the younger generation coming up and i think a lot of them get it my granddaughter gets it she's 16 years old and you know she'll kiss a fish and let it go because of what we're we're teaching her it's about it's about passing it forward yeah. And we're trying to come up right now with our marketing team and give every guest that walks in a sticker about catch and release, but I think I think catch and release has kind of been worn out. We yeah. need to come up we need to come up with a new <laughs> tag tag uh call to action CTA that they uh you know, we don't want to 
browbeat them and we don't want to strong arm people but we also want to we want to educate them and we want to hold them accountable you know right. when i went to alaska we we kept a lot of fish oh yeah but we went to argentina i fished tierra del fuego in the rio grande mm -hmm. uh, uh there's no you don't keep nothing i mean it's illegal yeah and will we be there one day here it makes you scratch your head i mean i i, I wouldn't i wouldn't mind it i mean Eating fish, like tonight, you're going to have grilled or blackened snapper. Yeah. Fish is good to eat. I, there, you, can't hold anything, you, can't, you can't hold anything against someone for eating fish. I yeah. mean, we grew up doing it. You did. Oh, yeah. Your parents did. So we, we, have to, we, have to, we have to educate and keep, keep the marketing going with our company with Bay Flash to be more responsible in the way we grow our business yeah. and you've heard me say that multiple times and it starts with conservation getting rid of all single source plastic it starts with educating the guides when we onboard a new guide it's it's a lengthy process it's not just show up with a boat and go. no no they they have to come to my house sometimes well most of the time I want them to come sit in my living room yeah get to know me but also, I'm going to ask them, you know, what's your thought about catch and release? Do you, you know, I don't want to see. You haven't seen a dead fish on our website in four years. Yeah. You will not. And I refuse to hang fish. And I was guilty back when I guided. You oh, know, I mean, when I was growing up, I thought it was the coolest thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, everybody wants to uh, have those hero, sh hero shots. But in reality is, the reality is, Pete, we have to um, hold ourselves accountable. We are. I look at you, and you look at me, and you ask yourself, like, what what's going to change with all the traffic, all the boat traffic, all the people, the the growing of the uh, the development on the coast yeah. is what scares me. Yeah. Um, so. You know, is it limit change? You know, we talked about that today on the boat. Do we change the limits? Do you know? I think it's 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 what you what what makes you feel right. What 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 makes you feel good? And um, all we can do is keep keep preaching the word. You know, you remember the freeze? Oh yeah, a couple, yeah. yeah. Which one? <laughs> We've had two. So the first one. So I went to a, um, and it, it shocked me to no end, and I thought it was amazing. Um, so I went to one of the public hearings about the rule change on the limits for sea trout. Yeah. And what, what shocked me and, and, and amazed me was the number of trout guides that stood up for the limit, that wanted that limit. The number of and they were all telling stories about we used to go out here and we could catch two three four 30 inch plus trout and we can't see that anymore and we want the limits back good and it's just it's it's it goes back to what i was saying things don't change overnight no but i think that the under the there, there's an underswell that is getting bigger of conservation mind to and in, in anglers and I think one of the things that like, I've seen a ton of, and, and whenever I talk to people that, especially are in the conservation space, I see a ton of, is they'll all say this next generation coming up has, is going to do it right. And whenever I talk to young kids, I mean, they don't want to keep fish. They just want to be out there and have fun. Right. They're, it's, <laughs> you know, we, we all, and, and we all do it. We all pick on the Gen Z about wanting to be yeah. on social media and yeah. post pictures of on Instagram. Well, that's all they want out of a fish. Yeah, you know, you want to pick, pick on them about about being on their phones, and I mean, but they they're the ones that are going out fishing, and all they want is the cool shot that they yeah. can share with their friends, and that and they, you know, show they had a good day. Yeah, I think you get back to something you do really well, and that's giving tips, tying knots, and giving information. And information, like I said, is power. Not to get up. Like I said, I get on a soapbox about conservation a lot, but I, I want to talk more about some of the tips you gave me today. You know, I don't hardly know you. 
to fish with when you when you fish with somebody on a boat for two days you get to know each other really well yep uh i'm fighting uh, i'm coming off the mend of a cracked ankle and a hernia surgery and so i'm just getting back on a boat after two months of not having no weight on my on my ankle it was really really cool to have you push more and let me fish more um a lot easier on my on my stomach and that's more of a selfish thing you know that right <laughs> yeah. there's nothing about being nice to you <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you but man you know we have we have a uh obligation to our parents that taught us how to fish and to their legacy we need to do a better job and i think we're on the same page about that do you agree oh yeah and getting that message um across you know with social media and how uh, rapid response a post is yeah and a reel and a, and just a story on instagram or facebook can can be a game changer yeah and um I had a, a a guest that's been coming here since early 2000s. Walked over to my skiff yesterday under my house, and he said, "Man, man, I've been watching you on LinkedIn." And I said, "Really?" Because yeah, man, you guys, I love I love what you've done with fly fishing. You're you're really into it, and because he's a snow skier, and I yeah. and we're good friends. I used to guide him. Yeah, Matt asked me. He said, "Hey." You know, I'd love to go with you on a guided trip. And I said, Matt, I didn't even renew my license. Yeah. After 25 years. And why don't you just come down here and go fishing and have fun? I'll hook you up, give you a night's nice lodging, and just go fishing with me as a friend. Yeah. And that's where I want to take take that level of, you know, I've invited you back. Yeah. Like, let's just go. You know, we of course, we we will take our cameras. I I don't leave them without it. <laughs> Drones. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I can't not. It's you know, honestly I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna interject because I don't need to, but I'm going to. Yeah. Um. I'm as as passionate and as much as I love fly fishing. I love capturing it. Storytelling. It like Sharing that gets it. me just as excited. So. To your point, yeah. when I was in Argentina and on the Rio Grande, yeah, um, I, I I don't know if you call it vlogging or blog, yeah, yeah. vlogging vlogging. So I I was the only single hand fly caster there. Yeah, everybody else was spade casting, and I had uh, two days. I held top rod with a nineteen point six pound sea run brown trout. Yeah, I mean it's about that big. I mean, it jumped six times, and I lost probably three to four before I ever caught that one straight in the hooks because I touched the reel, which is a no-no. Yeah, just let them run. Yeah, they're they're so big, it's not a redfish. I mean, <laughs> no, you'll, you'll break your finger if you touch a reel. And so um, one thing I did was shot a lot of video. Yeah. And... It felt so good to be able to share that with other people. That there's such, there's such a vast fishery. Mm -hmm. um, it's beautiful down there. Yeah, and and you know, one thing I'm very proud about with our lodge and our fishery in the in the fly fishing uh, push that we're we're working with is that it's almost the same excitement other than getting on a jet you don't have to travel that far and that's what i want to tell people and convey that you're going to see fish here and when we bring in booking companies yeah the first thing they say is we had no idea how clear your water was <laughs> like was the, holy crap that was the oh my god the first time i i visited corpus christi yeah we were driving over um driving over the bridge to padre island and I just looked at my wife and I said, I didn't know they had clean water in Texas. It's like, I, I thought we were in Florida. Yeah. This is amazing. And then, I mean, my, my wife's a geologist. So instead of just being like, yeah, this is beautiful. She explained how the so Mississippi what? drift works. And yeah. <laughs> I got a little geology lesson. So one thing 
a lot of fly fishermen that are just getting into it and you got to remember i've only been doing this one year yeah and i'll tell you double haul is important but one thing i learned in argentina is a is a great roll cast can get you a yeah. lot of places quick i meant to pick your brain about how you were doing that on the boat because it's it's like uh, i do not have a strong roll cast and i mean i do i i'm i started i got my jeez i can't talk anymore too much all hands um <laughs> i went on my first which, which if you're drinking all hands is one um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i went on my first western trip mm -hmm. and um we went to new mexico and i've gone a couple more times but like so i do not have a roll cast but watching you use that on the flat today a few times i was like okay i need to figure this out because i can see there's plenty of applications you see how fast it goes oh out? yeah i mean it, it yeah. and i learned that i'm going back in february next year um just because it was so exciting but um you know we bring guests in here and one thing they will say at dinner and when i when i have dinner with guests is like you know our shots were no further than 15 foot all day and in the and and it, just to be clear my best fishing i've ever had again this is one year was from october to february that's the best time to be here oh i was in bibs cold weather oh yeah the fish were very lethargic but the water was so clear because it's cold and i'm gonna tell you if you want to book a trip on the Texas coast, come in the winter. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. You can dress up, you know, you can layer. Yeah. And in the summer, you can't layer. You, you can't take, all you can, all you can yeah. do is put hoods on and, and sun protection and it's hot. Nor normally summertime, July, uh, about 10 o'clock, if you'll look on the back of the platform and you won't see me because I'm sitting in the water next to the boat. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. Just keep in mind um, one advice, one one piece of great advice I could give someone. Again, I'm a newbie, but is work on your roll cast and work on short, very short, short shots, game. short game. Yep. Um, uh, I was with Dane and Mike pre-injury in March 9th when I got hurt snow skiing, and we were way off the beaten path. Mm -hmm. We were scouting. And we decided that uh, let's do this. Let's go a place that we've never been, and we did. We uh, we never started the boat until we went home. We pulled the entire time, and I was very fortunate to have a shot at a 30-inch redfish, my biggest to date. That was four foot from the bow, <laughs> and he was looking at me. And I made a simple roll cast, and they're barking at me: strip, 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 strip. And I did, and he he didn't even know he had a fly in his mouth. And they they said, Chris, you better be ready, get ready, because he he's getting ready to run. And yep. sure enough, if it had not been for Dane pushing the boat, I would have probably lost the fish because he went up, he went probably at least 125 foot before I could slow him down. And we were into the backing. Yeah, and I, I could see white, and I was like. Are you, are you, can you help me? And like, no, you're on your own. <laughs> so, so I thought you were in Argentina. You're an expert. I yeah. said, well, these everything's different. And adapting to your environment mm -hmm. is such a key element in learning how to be a better fly fisherman. Yeah. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. And I think, I think when – and that's something that I, I preach constantly is I, I think going out you know, if, if your favorite species is, say, redfish or tarpon, whatever your favorite species is in your home waters that you're doing all the time, I think that every time you get a chance, you should take it to go do something different. Absolutely. Because you start learning new ways to, I mean, like, like we were just talking about roll casting. You know, you mm -hmm. learn these different tricks, these different tips, these different ways to, I mean, my Mike and, and Dane, you know, First of all, just real quick, I've already told them they're Texans that just go to they spend the summer in Colorado because they're down here so much. Right. But they they've spent so much time um, 
chasing trout yeah. that that they look at how a fish is moving through the water and how it's reacting with the top of the water different yeah. than than I do then and yeah. so I was learning from them like what I would normally just be, blow off and ignore they were like oh that's a redfish right there and you know watching that and I got to see that and I got to experience that and that's something that I took away from what like from them it's like man how many fish have I missed because I was yeah. like no oh, that's not a redfish and it you know and they're yeah. catching those fish well the yeah. fish are a little picky today but one I mean, thing I've learned from them too is that they know what kind of swirl is yeah that, there's that's, a mullet that's, swirl and then there's a redfish swirl and that's that's what I'm trying to say and so you're saying I'll, it better I'll let the cat out of the bag and if you have bubbles in the middle of that swirl yeah it's probably a redfish son of a gun you didn't know that I didn't know that well I didn't tell you that today because I wanted to catch more fish in you <laughs> so. well how'd that go <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> so we're all learning constantly and you know we're fortunate enough to be able to have a base system that's healthy but it still needs help it needs help and you know I would like to be able to donate more to the base system and um, well you guys you guys are you guys are helping with the the um, with the oysters yeah we are I mean yeah. we've donated to CCA uh, we I don't know how many trips that we donate or and sell to CCA chapters yeah. to their to their banquets yeah I want to say uh, 15 and 20 a year and you know, that that's a, that's a great money maker for them to yeah. donate you know to grab the opportunity to donate more to the bay and um, give back yeah. So, think about it. And you know, how can one give back, not just financially, monetarily, but hold yourself accountable on, you know. And and I think like from and that's and you know we talked about it a little bit earlier. And I think from a conservation standpoint, you know we you, you know you talk about conservation, you talk about you know talking about the 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 specific issues, and I think and this is. I think one of the best ways you can give back for conservation is giving somebody a good, great, fantastic experience in the area that you want to conserve. Because if I if I just called somebody on the phone and said, "Hey, you know, we have this issue facing the Texas coast. I I need your help." And they've never been there, they've never seen a picture of it, they've never heard of it. They don't care. No. But if you know you come down and stay stay with you guys and you have this amazing experience you get to see a ton of fish you get to see a, a beautiful part of the texas coast and then you see oh my goodness that that might all go away you're way more inclined to even just fill out a survey or contact someone right. about standing up for it right and that's i mean i i personally think like you know you hear that social like and I don't want to get too much on the soapbox, but I'm going to get a little bit. You hear like all the evils of social media, mm -hmm. and I think social media is one of the greatest conservation tools we have. It's the yellow pages of the '60s, yeah, '70s, <laughs> right? But, yeah, the phone. Book. I don't. I, I wasn't around. I know, but you know, <laughs> by people, the time we, I saw the figure out what a phone book was, it so was too late. Social media is to like, like, you know, something would happen on our block, and your neighbor would call you and say, hey, did you see? Yeah. And then it just was chain reaction. And that's kind of like social media. Yeah. But on steroids. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I want to talk a, a little bit about the um, the staff that we have. We're very fortunate. Yeah. Um, we feel like you have to invest in your people. They're the most important part of your business. Um, we've made a decision this year to give 14 paid holidays off. Yeah. It doesn't sound like a lot, but that's two extra weeks of paid vacation. Yeah. And we don't have a lot of turnover. 
No, I mean, I, most of the most of the staff that you've introduced me to, they're either young, or they've been here for twenty years. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're, and when I mean they're young, they're Between young, and yeah. they're and they're like just they're just starting with you because they're young. Yeah, not because. <laughs> Not for any other reason, right? Yeah, and it's hard really to hire people in this area. I mean, we don't we don't have any college campuses other than Victoria. Yeah, and um, but that's you know it's forty eight miles, fifty miles away. Oh yeah, and so um, no, y'all are. This is the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you are in the end of the earth, and so yeah. When I moved my wife down here, we found out that you know there was not a lot of creature comforts like. We didn't have Starbucks and we didn't have Chick Fil A, and that's why we would learn how to cook so well. Because yeah, you know you, you know you'd have to drive 50 miles to get a decent meal. Yeah, but there are some really, really good restaurants in Sea Drift and Porta Cana area. And I was looking back, kind of rewinding our last two days and how fun it was. And I just want to talk about a little bit about how the fish staged up and posted up <laughs> over the last two days it, it was the weirdest thing like they were so off like out of the way areas and if you if you didn't put muscle into your pole pulling yeah. you could you, you probably wouldn't get to them and there's many times today i watched you guys you were in the boat with dan and mike and y'all were actually on the bottom pushing yeah and catching fish oh yeah and so yesterday uh, same thing, you know. The fish were a little bit more cooperative. They were they're were quiet. They weren't they weren't they weren't mad. Uh, today they were a little bit mad about something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a biologist, but I can tell you they were mad. They did, yeah. They didn't want anything to do with anybody. No. And so, um, give you a little bit about where we want to go in the next three, four to five, ten years. Um, I'm excited to bring in a guide from Florida. Mm-hmm. I'm working with a guide out of San Marcos that's coming down, a guide out of Rockport that's I've been training. And uh, I, I make it – I incentivize them to come work with me. Yeah. And I'm not going to get into the nuts and bolts of how I do that. That's proprietary. Yeah. But I will say I make it to where um, they – you know, I said this earlier, you know, you – you can't expect what you don't inspect, but you also have to train, and um, you have to lead by example. And so, I want to be on the boat with them. Yeah. And you know, I push them; they push me, and we get to know each other. And that's how I met Dane and Mike, and they've been a great asset to our company. Um, and I see a lot of great things happening in the next next year to, to five years. Yeah. With fly fishing. Um, some people ask me all the time, like, are you going to be a completely all fly fishing lodge? Personally, I would love to be. Yeah. I would love to be a Belize destination. Yeah, yeah. Where it's all fly fishing. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. and Because we have the estuary to support it. Yeah. And, look, sustainability, we, we let everything go to grow, right? All the fish are let go. For the last two days, we let 20 fish go. <laughs> and they were healthy. They all kicked yeah. off perfect, right? And so, um, you know, if we if we could get, you know, even if we get fifty percent of fly fishing here, I'd be happy. Twenty yeah. percent, I'd be happy. But it's it's a work in progress. And you've said this twice, three times. I've heard you say, "Great things don't happen right away." Right. You know, it's a slow process. Uh, if, if there's a way I could speed it up, I would love to, um, especially while I'm still here. I want my grandkids to experience this. And Well, I can tell you that, that one of your grandkids was telling me that, that 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 he – I was talking to him the other night, and he he was talking about pushing fly fishing, about bringing in more fly fishermen. Yeah, absolutely. About wanting to offer more fly fishing, like yeah. more packages, more more – opportunity for fly fishing out of out of here yeah. so you you're laying the groundwork within within your own well, family you know we just picked up a 15 passenger van brand new mercedes yeah. where we can drive on the tarmac in port lavaca 13 miles away we can have snacks on the 
on the bus. You can pick right up from the airport. I can drive to your plane. <laughs> it's like Argentina style. I see, I learned that. Yeah. That's what they do there. And we can drive out to the tarmac, pick you up, have appetizers, some nice all hands. Everything ready to go. Yeah. And, and bring you back, um, take you back to the airport for free. It's complimentary. And so if you have your own plane or if you want to fly into Victoria, United Airlines flies to Victoria twice a day now. Mm -hmm. I think twice or once a day. Um, we'll have to see about that. But I know they fly there every day. Yeah. So, you know, we'll pick in Victoria. Victoria's complimentary. Port Lavaca. Victoria's 48 minutes. Um, if you want to fly to Corpus, we can work out some arrangements. Just need to call ahead. Yeah. Pick you up if you want to go fly fishing with us. And so... We've made, we're making, we've made a substantial investment into conservation, fly fishing, and, you know, it's a perfect mousetrap. It really is. I yeah. mean, we have the estuary, we have the, we have the culinary excellence, we have the, we have the accommodations, the bedding, everything we buy is through the Marriott uh, system. Yeah. Um, the vase, the pillows, my wife's all in that. <laughs> she loves that. So I think we do a jam up job um of treating you um really well. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. I have one hundred percent. What's your what if what's your biggest takeaway? Um and I'm not gonna try to feed you information, but what would be your number one thing that you're most impressed with? The food. The food. The food. Not the fishing. Well, so I have a little bit of a. I mean, I have a little bit of a. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You fished a lot of places. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, no, not even that. It's um, the food it's, is. It's more. It's more. It, like the reason I see the food over the fishing is because like, and it's still kind of it's weird to me, but like, because I fish here a lot. Yeah. So so it's so like I came into this knowing what the fishing could potentially be like, even with all the rain runoff. Right. And that was um, jam up. Yeah, but. The food is. I'm excited for dinner. <laughs> Don't be. You guys might just every now and then. You know, you're gonna walk in to see how the guests are doing at dinner, and you're like, Pete, what are you doing here? Like, God, just don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, Pete did it. He did tell me their first night at dinner. He said, "Man, do not tell my wife about this place." Something yeah. to that effect. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I was, I was, I was telling her. I was telling her about some of the food. She was like, she was just yeah. She was jealous. So one thing we're really proud of that I want to market in our goals for 2023 and 24 is we want to make sure everyone knows this is wife approved. <laughs> I mean, it is wife approved. The whole place. The whole place. Yeah. I mean, we have jacuzzis for different. We have honeymoon suites. Um, you're oh the, yeah, you're in the honeymoon suite. Oh, by yourself. The guest house. Yeah, dude. If if I had, if I was like, if like I've talked to my family a little bit about it. Like, if you had a family, oh, four or five, four or five, and and you wanted to stay overlook the overlook San Antonio and just it's quiet. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful. It's peaceful. There's a ton of space over there. All right, in the middle of the night, I'm like, I'm like if somebody was in that house, I'd never know it. It's, not, it's a little big for one person. Yeah. I appreciate it. it's a little big for one person, right? But but I mean, it would be like, I'm 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 pushing my dad a little bit to try to convince my parents, you yeah, know, to it. come down and you duck know hunt. you know I'm gonna give you some love. Yeah, I, I hook you up. Yeah, I know somebody. You know you know a guy. I do know somebody that. <laughs> kind of owns this place it, it works out real well but um and my wife likes you by the way oh no <laughs> yeah so she she's a really good judge of character that's good i yeah. think anybody at fly fishes yeah she likes well we are a better breed <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah but yeah. no uh it's been an experience that i won't forget and well, that i hope i hope through all of this that that more people can come down because I'm gonna beat the beat up a dead horse. Like, I 100% believe that that the base root of of conserving any place is offering a good experience in that yeah, place. That's a great way to say it. You know, 
it's about paying it forward yeah. to the next group coming along and so it, it all ties into doing the right thing yeah conservation um giving back and just really taking care of what has been handed down to us yeah all yeah. right guys we uh, as you can see if you're watching we ran a little late we just got some apps breaded quail eggs with a jalapeno ranch uh, i think so man all right well, before we dig into this <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you man thank you so much for having me down yeah absolutely. i really appreciate i'm i'm glad i get to share this with everybody that that follows and i'm hoping that some of you guys honestly some of you guys that are not living in texas and some of you guys that are living in texas that want to come down you want to experience the coast but you're not sure the best way to do it you're not sure about lodging food guides yeah i mean you know this you is don't, everything you don't have to get on an airplane no if you're living in houston dallas san antonio um you're two and a half hours away yeah you can be make it here by 5 30 for appetizers dinners at 6 30 yeah you wake up next morning and the program's really pretty cut and dry it's it's really it's, exciting it's really relaxing so when you walk in uh miss judy's going to give you a speech and come to your table and say are y'all fly fishing i said yeah yes ma'am miss judy say well we have the fly fishing <laughs> the fly fisherman special yeah. for breakfast and <laughs> so are we today you had tacos to go tacos to go oh my god that's the move yeah i mean don't get me wrong the fly fisherman special was fantastic yeah but the but the, i'm a taco guy i know you are and it's got that perfect heat yeah oh yeah oh that habanero heat on that taco and i'm telling you you know it's authentic and so we we really appreciate you giving us the opportunity yeah. Pete. uh it was damn good time fishing with you for two days i wish we got to fish more not film more but uh we got to watch a amazing morning yesterday that was i was yeah that, that was so fun to watch we have a flooded marsh with brown stained water everywhere and those guys are putting 16 fish in the boat it was yeah it's perfect and everything was released of course and man you know I can't wait for us to ha have you back. Oh, thank you. I, do I have I to would, twist your I, arm? No, probably not. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Just have to tell me what days. All right. Well, let's let's dive into these quail eggs. Yeah. So, guys, if you're listening, I'm going to leave in the description down below um, all the links so you guys can check Bay Flats out. If you're watching on YouTube, do me a favor, hit like and subscribe. Oh man. <laughs> I gotta talk faster. If you're listening to this <laughs> on uh, on Spotify or any other podcast, please, please leave me a five star review. Uh, thank you again. I I gotta eat. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>